using your EHR for efficiency. I realize that sounds like an oxymoron, but um, my guest today suggests that it really isn't. It, it, it may be possible. I'm with Dr. Tyler Gluckman, who is uh, at Providence St. Vincent Heart Clinic in Portland, where you're the Medical Director of Clinical Transformation. What a great title, particularly here at the CV Summit. Tell me about your title first before we even get to the EHR. Well, I'm fortunate. I'm a non-invasive cardiologist, but I'm fortunate that I've moved over time into a role that's more delving into quality and where we need to transform as a healthcare system to better deliver care to our patients. And whether this deals with accountable care or better delivery of care or identifying gaps in care, that's really a lot of what I'm doing. And as a part of it, as you can well imagine, electronic medical or health records are an integral part of everything we do. So a lot of it, a lot of it front and center is really uh, transformative work that we're doing in that area as well. I mean, two years ago at this meeting, which was in Vegas at that point, one of the, I think the cover story we did was, you know, trying to traverse the valley of death because this was a complete transformation of the industry. A year ago, it was still pretty stressful. I think EHR is still a hot button stress topic for doctors. There is absolutely no question. This is the pain point. This is the bane of their existence for a lot of things, in part because really it encapsulates everything that we do. We live in that world. Right. In fact, we've encouraged the college and other organizations to really get in the EHR because that's where people are spending all their time living, whether they want to or not. And I think we've come some way. There is still tremendous work to do to improve things, but part of the role of the meeting here today was just to be able to give perspectives on where we could be going in the future, but also to really understand from people what are the pain points you're feeling and how have different people from across the country come up with solutions to that? So using your EHR for efficiency, and you, you were good enough to say, is it possible? So you, for the skeptics in the crowd, you had that in there. Is it possible? So I think it is, and it depends about how you define efficiency overall. <laughs> I, I think the real challenge is increasingly from payers and from the government, we have to meet cer certain regulations in order to get reimbursed. From a quality standpoint, our documentation on the inpatient and outpatient side, independent of our registries, is increasingly being used to assess our ability to meet certain quality benchmarks. And so if that's the, the, what we're being held up to try and achieve, we need a tool that's successful in that regard. I think in some respects there are ways to be able to do some of that overall, and we've talked today a little bit about some templates and other ways in which we can improve efficiency in that way. There's still tremendous work to improve in this regard as well. What were some of your recommendations? So we talked today a little bit about how to be able to engage more of the care team in this process. So whether it relates to procedural documentation, even some of your day-to-day -day note documentation, your evaluation and management services, how do you fundamentally leverage other people who traditionally haven't been a part of the process? So in the case of reporting a stress ECG or a treadmill stress test, can we get the techs and the nurses that supervise those to help actually conceptualize the note? And the answer is we can, and it then involves really fewer people and a more coordinated effort in delivering that report. There the stress point is to make sure that they have all the indications on paper, they have the paper trail so that reimbursement happens and you don't actually have someone putting in information that isn't quite what is necessary for reimbursement? Absolutely, but I would say even one step further, and reimbursement doesn't seem to get the minds for a lot of people when it's more driven at a healthcare system level for a lot of the docs here. But fundamentally, when it comes to reporting of stress tests, for example, it actually integrates very nicely with appropriate use for coronary revascularization. And so if you have a standardized approach for reporting your stress test, that may help to then make sure that you're always reporting the risk of that stress test, which impacts other different quality metrics, in this case, appropriate use. So I think from that perspective, there are some fundamental things that you can do to make sure that we're meeting all the benchmarks that we need to. It can drive quality improvement, but also meet all the necessary requirements that are needed for coding for reimbursement. And for data for analysis. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think the pinnacle of what we want to try and achieve in all this is capturing data in a structured way that would allow us to be able to mine that data later on and, and answer questions. And a lot of the future of where we're going with things like comparative effectiveness research, we can't as effectively, no pun intended, do because we're not capturing data in a way that's mineable. So more and more, if we can capture data in our source, our electronic health record, in a way that can actually be effectively mined, that would be very powerful. 
And one step further, if we can mine that internally or nationally to help predict Absolutely. who's going to be at risk for readmission, who's going to be at risk for complications, that would fundamentally change how we practice medicine today. What were some of the questions that you get when you do a presentation like this? Well, I think there were a whole range of questions, ranging from, I'm a physician that works in a practice of four docs, and we go to seven hospitals, and we live in all different electronic health records, both in our office, but all the different hospitals that we go to. And so a very important question asked about interoperability. How do we get these different systems to talk to one another? There are other questions around workflows, and I think the challenging issue that we've come up a lot is electronic health records have forced us fundamentally to explore how we do things. The amount of variation, and for those people who aren't into lean processes, even if you're not a believer in that, if you were to actually take somebody outside of medicine and come in and evaluate how we do things, you may get one doc who on Tuesday likes to do it this way, but a different doc on Wednesday likes to do it a different way. And fundamentally, that just is not very efficient. The EHRs and the standardization that's required as part of implementing them have uncovered, in many cases, the creepy crawlies that come out from underneath the rock in underscoring that a lot of our processes, a lot of our workflows are fundamentally flawed in the way that we've done things, or at least have a lot more room for improvement. So any final words of encouragement? So I think it's these types of forums that allow people to come together. Admittedly, as someone brought up, a lot of the people are here because they get it or they're interested in it. And how do you get those people who aren't really interested in it to sort of come on board? But I think getting people to talk about it and also engaging the American College of Cardiology is very important. We are now hearing EHR vendors beginning to talk instead of just to their customers, who are the people that have implemented it, also to national thought leaders and organizations like the ACC that can really be a voice, a common voice, to be able to implement a lot of the changes that we need. Well, Dr. Ty Gluckman is just one of the voices that we're going to be talking to for a cover story for CardioSource World News, where I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.